And I have before me one of the best Apple versus Windows laptop showdowns I think I could have possibly found. This is the Lenovo Slim Pro 7X, and this is the Apple MacBook Pro 14 M2 Pro. The performance is very similar. The battery life is actually quite similar, and the screens are almost identical. We're gonna get into all of that in this video. But first and foremost, we're gonna kick it off with the review of the build quality and usability of the laptops. Now, looking at the build quality of the Lenovo Slim Pro 7X, you can see that it is assembled very nicely. The bottom cover fitting into the side panel of the chassis very nicely. You got a nice large vent along the bottom, but no vents on either of the sides. Now doing a quick tap test, it is assembled very nicely. An all aluminum chassis, no rattle. It's a great laptop, especially compared to the coveted MacBook Pro. Now looking at the MacBook Pro, once again, we have a laptop that's very well assembled. Bottom cover fits into the side panel very nicely. We have a vent along the back of the chassis and along the sides of the chassis as well in case you need that fan to kick on. But these laptops are so efficient, you're rarely gonna hear the fan kick on, especially doing like Photoshop work or web browsing, some more basic tasks. You hear the fans kick on more in the video editing and motion design production. Now, let's do a quick tap test. For the MacBook Pro, sounds almost the exact same. So they both are assembled very nicely. Now taking a quick look at the ports, you can see on the left side panel of the MacBook Pro, we have our power adapter, two USB type C's, and our headphone jack. And on the right side panel, we have an HDMI, USB type C, and an SD card reader. Now the benefit of the MacBook Pro is you're not gonna occupy one of your USB C's with a charger port like you will on the Slim Pro 7X. As you can see, we have two USB type C's, a USB type a, and on the other side, we have a USB type A, a headphone jack, and a manual cutoff switch for the webcam. So there's no dedicated power port. So you will be consuming one of your USB-C ports with your charger. Now, battery life is one area that everybody is celebrating the MacBook Pro extensively. And yes, the battery life will win out on the MacBook Pro in this head-to-head -head battle. It still isn't a total matchup, but you can see the battery life results coming up on the screen. The MacBook Pro beats out the Slim Pro X by about seven hours of battery life. Now, in the beginning, I did talk about it being close, but honestly, that's closer than a lot of laptops that have the performance that matches the MacBook Pro and comes still in a thin and light chassis. You can find thin and light chassis that have good performance and great battery life, but the performance does not match up to the MacBook Pro as well as something like the Slim Pro X because of the Ryzen 7 6800HS processor and the RTX 3050 GPU, which actually helps the Lenovo get better video editing performance than the MacBook Pro but we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability between these two models, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is do a little open and close test, see if both open and close easily with one hand, and they do without any issues. And of course, taking a look at quick screen flex there, the Slim 7X has fantastic rigidity, and so does the MacBook Pro. Actually, the MacBook Pro has a stiffer screen than the Slim Pro X. Now, one of the benefits of the Slim Pro X is the laptop actually opens all the way up to 180 degrees, whereas the MacBook Pro only opens up to that kind of standard 45 degree angle. Now, they both have upward facing speakers, and here's a quick audio sample of both so you can hear what they sound like. <laughs> And for a quick sample of the webcam, here's what each of them look and sound like so you can hear and see them. This is the webcam on the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch M2 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X and a little sample of the audio for you as well. It seems like it really wants to be dark. I've got a light right in front of my face and when I try and brighten it up, it just, just pulls it dark. And when I turn the light off, it seems to try and you know counteract it and then it wants to darken it. But I don't know, it's just, it's a little sensitive and it leans kind of dark uh, and a little on more of the orange and yellow tones rather than more the natural lighter blue tones. So 
Yep, it's a webcam. Now, to be fair, I really prefer the keyboard on the MacBook Pro. It's something that Apple has really refined over the years. And getting back to the Scissor Switch keyboard, it feels so nice under my fingers. A nice short to medium key press, snappy, and it looks great nestled in front of this all black anodized bed that they have set up for the MacBook Pro. Now, you do have a fingerprint reader here on the MacBook Pro where you do not on the Lenovo Slim Pro X. Now, the key press on the Lenovo is a short to medium key press as well, but it just feels a little bit more plasticky just not as refined as the MacBook Pro. Like I said, that scissor switch keyboard just really has a nice pop and a really nice feel under your fingers. Now, in regards to the trackpad, this is something where I think preference is really going to win out. Over in the Apple MacBook Pro, you have a vibration click trackpad. Basically what that means is you're not actually clicking and pressing down the trackpad. It is going to simulate a click by sending a vibration through the trackpad. Now the benefit of this is you can click anywhere on the trackpad. The negative aspect of this is if you like a traditional manual click, you don't have that. This trackpad cannot click up top because basically it's on a hinge, like a diving board. So you come down about halfway down and you can start to actually click the trackpad. Now the trackpad is mounted very well to the chassis. It has great click sensitivity and I really like it. But when push comes to shove, it really comes down to preference on which trackpad you like more. Now, as you can see, the Lenovo is a tiny bit bigger than the Apple MacBook Pro. So we're not gonna split hairs on that. They're both great trackpads. Now here's a quick audio sample of me using each of the keyboards and trackpads. So you can hear what they sound like. Now, in regards to the weight and thickness, they are very, very close. You can see them coming up on the screen now, and they are almost twins when it comes to weight and thickness. So really, either one is a great choice. Now, I will say, however, that the stance on the Slim 7 Pro X is a little bit wider, as you can see here. So you can see there's about a half an inch more to the computer than the Apple MacBook Pro. So you're getting a slightly wider screen. Now the screens are great, as I mentioned earlier. They are both 3K displays. They have almost the exact same resolution, except like I mentioned, the Slim 7 Pro X is a tiny bit wider. Now from a picture quality and brightness standpoint, the Apple MacBook Pro is going to win out. You're going to have 507 nits of brightness, 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.21. Whereas on the Slim Pro X, you're going to have 99% sRGB, 73% Adobe RGB, and 73% DCI-P3. 382 nits of brightness and a 1.47 on the Delta E. So the MacBook Pro is gonna be brighter, more color accurate, and it's going to have a larger color gamut range. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks. Now, keep in mind that both of these laptops are not upgradable post-purchase. So if you want 16, 32 gigs of RAM, you gotta do that when you order it on the website. When it comes to the Slim Pro X, I recommend Possibly if your budget allows getting the 32 gig model. The model I have comes with 16 gigs of RAM and the benchmarks reflected in this video are representation of those 16 gigs of RAM. But if you upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, there'll be a lot of tests that you might actually get better performance than the MacBook Pro. And I'll mention those as we're going through the video. So the 16 gig model, the Slim Pro X is around the $1,450 range, whereas the 32 gig model is around the $1,575 range. So both models are actually less expensive than the Apple MacBook Pro. So just keep that in mind when considering purchasing. But of course, you can check the links in the description below for the exact live pricing. Now, kicking things off in the simulated benchmarks, you can see that the Apple MacBook Pro stands above the Slim 7 Pro X on both Geekbench and Cinebench R23. However, life is not made up of simulated benchmarks, as I like to say, so let's go ahead and dive into Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, once again, you can see the Apple MacBook Pro performing above the Slim 7 Pro X. But remember, this is at 16 gigs of RAM and about $600 cheaper. 
So if you go ahead and you upgrade to 32 gigs, I'm guessing you're gonna get almost the exact same score, if not slightly higher, because Photoshop loves RAM. And I think if you're gonna be a heavy Photoshop user, then having the 32 gigs of RAM is going to be extremely helpful to you. Now, one area that the MacBook Pro is literally eliminated on is going to be certain 3D modeling apps. As you can see the results coming up on the screen, the Slim 7 Pro X scores good results in 3D modeling. Not excellent, I would not consider this my absolute workstation for 3D modeling, but if you're a student or you wanna get into 3D modeling, this is a great starting point, especially with 32 gigs of RAM, you should have what it takes to run some basic 3D modeling work. Now, moving on to After Effects, this is an area where I'm gonna lean towards the MacBook Pro, because as you see the split between the scores, the RAM is really not gonna make up that big of a difference. However, you probably will be able to go from the 713 that you're currently seeing up to around the low 900s by upgrading to 32 gigs of RAM. So you will have some pretty good performance pickups by going to 32 gigs, but you won't be able to outshine the MacBook Pro. Now moving on to video editing, this is where we see the Slim 7 Pro X really take off. The export times really are not even close. You can see a two minute and 57 second export out of 4K for the Slim 7 Pro X versus the Apple MacBook Pro, which is about five minutes and 26 seconds. Now go ahead and unplug from the charger and that's where we see the Apple MacBook Pro win out. It remains with that five minutes and 26 second export time, whereas this Slim 7 Pro X jumps up to about 18 minutes on the export time. Now, where things get really interesting is on 6K video editing. As you can see, the export time for 6K B-RAW out of the Slim 7 Pro X is 19 minutes and 25 seconds, whereas the Apple MacBook Pro is well above the 30 minute mark. I've run multiple tests. It doesn't seem to really nail down an exact time, but the average I got from around the 58 minute point when I was first testing it, I saw as low as about 35 minutes and then a little bit in between, but I never saw anything below 25 minutes for 6K to 6K export. Now I did run a 6K to 4K export for the MacBook Pro and we saw about a 25 minute export time. So if you're willing to lose out on resolution, you can export to 4K for a little bit faster export time. But overall, the Slim 7 Pro X is a faster laptop out of Premiere Pro. Now also, you gotta look at the playback. For 6K B-RAW playback, you had slightly better playback out of the Apple MacBook Pro. You had nine drop frames from the Apple MacBook Pro out of the 16,177 in the project for B-RAW, and you had 153 drop frames from the Slim 7 Pro X. However, you're not really gonna be able to see those, and so they're both about even on the playback. And if you upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, you should see zero drop frames from the Slim 7 Pro X. That's another area that RAM is very helpful with is playback in Premiere Pro. So punch for punch for video editing, I would be choosing the Slim 7 Pro X unless you find yourself always on the go and you need to have battery life on the go for video editing and you can never find an outlet for like eight hours at a time, then I could see where the MacBook Pro would make sense. Now DaVinci Resolve is one area where the MacBook Pro edges out the Slim 7 Pro X by about a minute. So if DaVinci Resolve is the program you're using, then you will get better performance out of the MacBook Pro. All right, so which one should you buy? As we just discussed, video editing, the crown, in my opinion, from Premiere Pro, goes to the Lenovo. For DaVinci Resolve, I would lean towards the Apple MacBook Pro. Now, punch for punch, overall, you're gonna get a better bang for buck out of the Lenovo, because you're gonna get great performance in Photoshop, like I mentioned, especially if you go for that 32 gigs, and even good performance in After Effects. However, the battery life is something you're going to be sacrificing by going with the Lenovo. Apple has created a very efficient laptop, so you can run for hours on end and not be plugged into a charger and still get full performance. So that is a big area where I know a lot of Apple users are celebrating Apple's accomplishment with their M1 silicone. Now the screens are both great, but again, the Apple MacBook Pro edges out the Slim 7 Pro X. So if you're a big Mac OS fan, then you really can't beat going with the Apple MacBook Pro. However, if you're a Windows fan, you have found a great competitor and a great option compared to the Apple MacBook Pro, and it's at a better price point. So really, I don't know which one to recommend. You really have to make the choice for yourself. Remember, links in the description below and make sure you subscribe. We're getting close to 100,000 subscribers and I would love for you to be a part of that journey as we push over. I'll see you in the next video.